Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop back with another mouthpiece review for you. I've gotten a lot of requests over the past couple of years to review um, different artist models from Yamaha. So Yamaha, of course, has a, a large list of fantastic trombone artists on their roster. And of course, with a number of these artists, they have developed uh, custom mouthpieces. And so I've gotten requests for these. I haven't always been able to get these in the shop, but fortunately, one of our viewers had a whole collection of these and very kindly sent them in for me to be able to experience and be able to share that. So a shout out to uh, Matt Henson. Thank you so much, Matt, for sending these in today. I I've got the Nils Landgren uh, artist model, a small shank mouthpiece here. So in case you don't know, um, and I'm a little late to the game, I really didn't start listening to Nils until, you know, the past, you know, five, you know, six, seven years, is a unbelievable uh, Swedish trombonist. Um, he's known for a lot of his funk R&B work. He, of course, does jazz and everything else. An amazing, amazing, amazing player here. And so they've got his own artist model uh, mouthpiece that they've designed with him here. So I'm going to be taking a play on this so that you can hear it and then we will talk about the experience afterwards. I'm going to be playing all of this today on my trusty King 3B. <laughs> Thank you. 
With all of the work that Nils Landgren does and all of you know the, the, the various genres he's working in, I would imagine that he wants a setup that gives him a lot of versatility. And so I can see why this mouthpiece really might provide that. So the uh, Landgren mouthpiece is a 25.11 uh, millimeter cup width. Um, so that puts it just a little bit below like a six and a half. So it's like a you know six and three quarters ish. Um, you know, still you know significantly larger than even like a seven C for example. Um, it has a relatively deep cup, not the deepest cup in the world. I would equate it, you know, maybe slightly shallower than like a, a box six and a half um, A, for example. Um, but again, that's kind of nice. Sometimes with the, especially the small uh, bore mouthpieces, the artist models we see, a lot of times they tend to be pretty shallow. Um, and I, I like that this has got a little bit more depth to it. Um, it does have a little bit tighter throat and backbore. Um, Yamaha describes it as a, like a medium tight backbore. Um, and I can feel that happening a little bit. And um, the rim does have kind of a semi-rounded uh, shape to it. And I think, frankly, of everything I noticed, I think that's what I noticed first. Um, I personally tend to like mouthpieces that have a little bit flatter rim, not crazy flat. Um, Dennis Wicks tend to be a little bit too flat for me and like the their, uh, their heritage models are way too flat for me. I like to have a little bit of contour, um, but I can feel the difference here. I typically play um, either like a six and a half or like a seven, uh, which is gonna be even a little bit smaller than this, but I think because of the rim shape, that little bit more curvature, it felt a little bit smaller to me. Um, but I started getting used to it. At first, it was not all that comfortable. I didn't actually like it all that much. Um, but as I started to kind of acclimate to it, what really struck me right away is that while it definitely was a little bit on the brighter side um, for me, it wasn't edgy bright. You know, I didn't feel like um, when I, for example, when I was trying to do ballad work or just, you know, straight ahead uh, standards work, I didn't feel like it automatically wanted to get that, that, that brilliance, that sharpness to the sound. It still stayed, you know, balanced, but, you know, towards the, the brighter end, towards the upper end of the, the timbre spectrum. Um, another thing I really noticed with this is it was really stable. I really liked how no matter what I was playing, um, I felt like the notes really slotted in well. Um, and so for example, on the, the ballad, I really liked how I was able to sit on the note, I was able to color it, and it was, again, really, really steady. It, was, it allowed me to do that versus me trying to have to fight a little bit to keep it in place before trying to color the note after that. I really liked the access to the upper register as well. I, I felt like going up to you know F twelfth partial. Um, I had good control with it. Um, and again, I, I think of, of anything for me, what I noticed is it did just continue to feel just a little bit on the small side. And I think again, a lot of it, I think it's just that rim contour. Um, everybody has different preferences with their rim contour shapes. And it's not to say this is this is nowhere near, for example, like the Christian Lindbergh um, series that are extremely rounded, fairly thin rims. This definitely is not like that, but I could feel a little bit of a difference with it. Um, but again, from you know, what I might expect for somebody like what Nils, you know, what he has to be doing, sometimes, again, there's smaller mouthpieces, there's a lot of brightness to them, they're fairly shallow. This felt really overall pretty comfortable. Um, the other thing I did notice is I think with the throat and backboard, I did feel just a little bit more compression than maybe I liked. It wasn't, it wasn't a you know, game changer. It didn't completely throw me off of what I was doing, but I could feel that a little bit. And again, I think for what I was doing, whether, you know, whatever the setting, I, I think I want to, myself, want to have just a little bit more openness to it. But if you're somebody who is maybe looking for a mouthpiece with a little bit more efficiency, um, I can see, again, holding back a little bit, I feel like this mouthpiece is going to be able to help support, um, especially that that air profile that maybe isn't dumping quite as much air into it. Um, so good, so really impressed. I mean, I shouldn't really be surprised, of course. Yamaha doesn't really make bad products. <laughs> and so I think this mouthpiece is very much a part of that. I really great and again I think it's a mouthpiece with a lot of versatility I think it could work whether you were doing lead playing section playing whether you were working in rock R&B funk you know commercial settings I think for the right player 
I think this has a lot of versatility with it. So um, thank you again, Matt, for sending these in. And thank you very much for watching. If you have any thoughts, comments about what you heard, or maybe you have experience with this mouthpiece or other Yamaha Art Artist Series mouthpieces, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you liked this video, please think about giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please think about doing that. We'd love to have you as a part of our community here. And that way you can find out about when we have new videos coming out. I'm trying to do them on a regular basis. Hopefully they're interesting, informative for you. And as always, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. So thank you very much as always for watching.